Rigel in the bottom right corner and Betelgeuse in the top left. Two of the most well-known stars of all, Alpha and Beta Orionis shine brightly, holding their own proudly in our skies. But which one of them could win in a battle for supremacy of the Orion constellation? Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we revisit the Orion constellation for one of the biggest stellar battles of all, Rigel vs Betelgeuse. So let's get to it. Those of you that are familiar with the stars will know that the constellation of Orion contains both of these giant stars. Betelgeuse here on the top left, also known as Alpha Orionis, and Rigel on the right, also known as Beta Orionis. So let's have a look at where these stars rank on the main sequence. We can see Betelgeuse top right here, not in the mainstream, and indeed not even in the regular class of giants, an M-class star, whereas Rigel is classified as a B-class supergiant. Seeing also the magnitudes, Rigel shines at an absolute magnitude of minus 7.8, whereas Betelgeuse, as it's a variable star, can vary somewhat between minus 5.5 and indeed as high as minus 7.8, just like Rigel itself. In terms of mass, Betelgeuse contains 11.6 plus or minus 5 solar masses, so it's a gigantic star. Rigel has 21 plus or minus 3 solar masses, so an even bigger star, and both are huge, powerful, and certainly in the supergiant category. Let's have a look at the actual sizes of the stars. We can see here in this diagram right at the bottom a little speck of dust, which is in fact our Sun, a typical G-class main sequence star, through Sirius and Pollux, which is also known as a subgiant, Arcturus of course, Alpha Boetes. Then here we are, here's Rigel, and you can see already that the volume Betelgeuse is, is far in excess in any of those, the red star here being Betelgeuse. If we were in our own solar system, it would actually cover all the way out to the orbit of Jupiter. Rigel, on the other hand, will not quite cover the orbit of Mercury, about halfway out, but still a large star nonetheless. So how do they rank in our skies then? Let's have a look at the brightest objects in our skies, the Sun, Moon, Venus, Jupiter, Mars and Mercury, or planets of course, until we get to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, through Canopus, Saturn, of course another planet, Alpha Centauri, Arcturus, Vega, and then eventually here we are at the 13th brightest object, or 6th most luminous star in our sky, Betelgeuse. We continue through Capella, and interestingly the first galaxy we find is the Large Magellanic Cloud, which can be seen in the Southern Hemisphere, unfortunately for those of us that live in the North. And then finally Rigel at the 8th brightest star, or the 16th brightest object, with a plus 0.17 magnitude, still an extremely bright star indeed. Interestingly, Betelgeuse has also been dimming fairly recently, although it seems to be back on track for now. Betelgeuse being a variable star would have dipped somewhat off this list until recently, although the lesser known Rigel itself is actually a variable as well. It does change plus or minus 0.13 magnitudes, so sometimes almost into the negatives, at its very brightest, but not on the same degrees of variability as Betelgeuse. The distance out to Betelgeuse is 700 light years and Rigel is estimated at 860. This means Rigel does start with a slight disadvantage, although it's a smaller star by volume. We don't know the exact distance and it could be even as far as 940 light years. Betelgeuse with the larger disk makes it easier to measure and both sit reasonably similar distances from the Sun. Now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that both stars were at one light years distance, some 63,000 astronomical units from us. What would Betelgeuse and Rigel be like? Obviously they're both very luminous stars. Betelgeuse at its maximum, remember, is almost 230,000 times brighter than the Sun. Rigel, 120,000 times brighter than the Sun. So we're actually talking about a completely different class of star. What is fascinating here is that if they were at one light year's distance, the Sun would remain the brightest object in our skies, but both Betelgeuse and Rigel would become brighter than the Moon itself, in fact some 16 times brighter, so at their most luminous, extremely bright objects indeed. Let's have a look at how that might look in our skies. First of all, you might wonder if we'd be able to see a discernible disk. In this graphic, if the Sun was in our sky, we can see that the answer is yes, for certain with Betelgeuse at least. Betelgeuse is a star that is much larger than the Sun, so even in our sky the Sun would only be 70 times larger, so they'd definitely be a discernible disk for us to see. Rigel perhaps less so, a possibly discernible disk with binoculars, although I wouldn't advise looking at the stars of this magnitude with binoculars of course. We may see a disk, but certainly showing us a bright star of the class that we don't have in our sky at this present time. So we wonder what they might look like if we imagine if we went to the pyramids of Giza. 
Here we see the beautiful Sphinx and the Khafre Pyramid in the background, some 36 metres of height. What would happen in midday? This is something like what we might see in our sky. So you can see here on the left the blue white supergiant Rigio, and in the middle here the reddish tone of the red supergiant that's Betelgeuse, shining brightly, way outshining the moon when it meets our sky. Even in daylight these two stars would actually increase the brightness of our day on Earth. They would be that powerful at one light year's distance. But what about if it were dark? Here we see Edinburgh, capital of Scotland of course, the beautiful castle there in the moonlight. And here we imagine Ridgel and Betelgeuse, they're clearly much brighter. Both objects 16 times brighter than the moon of course. We imagine a clearly blue and slightly red star in the sky, much brighter than the moon so almost providing daylight at night. That's how astonishingly powerful these stars are. So overall then, as this is a battle of course for the supremacy of the Orion constellation, Rigel with its larger mass and altogether more powerful star, and certainly in the future it will become even bigger as well, versus Betelgeuse, of course a red supergiant and an M-class powerhouse. There is however a question mark for me with Betelgeuse, as it does vary quite a lot in luminosity, and at its dimmest is substantially less bright than Rigel. Betelgeuse certainly isn't the largest supergiant in our Milky Way, and those titles might fall to the likes of Thy Canis Majoris, Stevenson 218 and Mu Cephi. Betelgeuse is also much further towards the end of its life cycle than Rigel, so I think overall I'm going to give the title to Rigel, but perhaps only on penalty kicks. A very close tie, but overall, because Rigel is the most massive of the two, it does make a more powerful star. Let's be thankful we don't have to really choose between these two superstars in the near and indeed distant future. Thanks for watching and subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who've already done so and if you want any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life don't forget to let me know in the comments below and perhaps next week your idea may just show up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.